I started my GTA Online series with the goal of my character Thick Man becoming the most powerful crime lord in Los Santos. Three years later, I can satisfyingly say that we've achieved that goal. The powder my labs make is the purest and my employees are the cutest. I've got a flying car that can shoot heat-seeking missiles. We own nightclubs that encourage consent. Some of my officers just have cash laying around and stacked up on the floor. In fact, I've got several officers for all the different businesses I run. I'm working more jobs than a single mum with a gambling problem. We've purchased multiple properties together to ensure Thick Man always has a warm bed to sleep in. And not to mention the state-of-the-art speaker system phone stand flexing the forefront of 2013 technology. My wardrobes have women's clothing in them. We also have a second phone speaker system. We're such a kingpin that I can call a cheap escort and she comes around within the hour. Arguably anyone could do that, but does just anyone have this grand view of a nine year long construction zone? We bought a damn super yacht. Yes, it's the mid range one, but who needs two helipads? That's just excessive. Plus we've got this captain here who's always ready to go. He never stops gripping the wheel. 10 and two. We own the shiniest mechanic shop in town. Our weed farm is empty right now, but just imagine how lush this would be if I managed the business better. Then finally my prized possession and definitely my biggest asset. The first apartment I ever bought. Nothing makes you feel more like a man than some good old fashioned asbestos exposure. Like the video if you sprinkle asbestos on your cereal to start the day with a bang. It's been a journey and one that I've enjoyed immensely, but it's time for Thick Man to take on a fresh challenge as buying a new Lamborghini doesn't hit as hard when you already own three others. I need to holiday somewhere new where I can start at the bottom and prove myself once again. But for the moment, it's time to say goodbye to GTA Online as Thick Man is flying to the city of NoPixel. This is a modded city where the stakes are higher. The police and gangs are real people. The economy is harsh. There are laws you have to follow and all you start with is an apartment, $5,000 and a dream. Welcome to Thick Man Season 2, No Pixel. When he's not wearing his suit, he really does look like a malnourished chemo survivor. I'd still hit. I spawn into my starter apartment and it's not bad at all. It's the kind of place you'd happily live by yourself but you wouldn't bring girls back to. The fridge is in the bedroom which I can't imagine is a turn on. I obviously can't use the name Thick Man as it's a bit on the nose for a modded city attempting to emulate real life. Instead I choose the fake name Karthik Manuel. It's an Indian first name and a surname that's origins go back as far as the Byzantine Empire. More importantly, if you put the names together, it says Thick Man. This little gag is potentially not worth having to explain to people why a white pasty stud has an Indian name. I head outside to begin my journey to the top. At the bottom of the elevator, I meet a guy who seems like a real straight shooter. Yeah, I shot, shot a couple of people, but that's okay. Yo, what? What? I didn't say nothing. All right, man, you peace. You want a car? What, you just give me a car? That's a rental. I'll admit it's not a great decision to hop into a stranger's car, especially when he just admitted to killing two police officers. Surprisingly, the big girl doesn't betray me and lets me keep the rental car. It's obviously not a rental car, but ignorance is bliss and walking sucks. I use the car to drive myself to a clothing store. The closest one is Kiki's Organic Clothing, so I guess I won't be able to buy the endangered Siberian tiger scarf I was lusting for. I can't just wear my suit, that's too obvious, so I go for something incognito. No one will know the life I used to live. You look like a drug lord. <laughs> With my new clothes, I'm ready to start making cash. I hop back into my rental and the engine doesn't start. You can't trust anyone anymore. So here I am running through the dark streets, well dressed and isolated. This truly is a started at the bottom story. I happen to pass a bank and so I decide to go in and check my balance. As expected, we have $5,000. It's not much money, but it is hard to make money in this city, so it's a start. I then jog over to a car salesman. <laughs> How much is this bad boy? It's uh, $6,900 after tax. My only worry is like yeah. once I start driving this car, I'll probably get like heaps of bitches, but they can only, there's only one passenger seat. Yeah, that is a, uh, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, you're right, you're right, hmm. In one of my first GTA Online videos, I bought the rat loader truck and named it Shaniqua. I must have her again, and so we need to make $2,000. I've also made the stunning and brave decision to turn gender stereotypes upside down and aggressively hit on women in the hopes of finding a sugar mama. Then when the time's right, I'll steal her belongings and hide in my apartment. Think big, work smart. Everything okay, sir? Um, it's better since I just saw you in that car. Oh, thank you. Well, my name's Delaney and it's nice to meet you, sir. Delaney, it's a pleasure. The name's Karthik. Karthik? Yeah, correct. Nice to meet you, Karthik. Hey, Jelani, have you met the Mind Goblin? Mind Goblin these nuts? 
Surprisingly, she doesn't fall for me, and I 100% know exactly why. You see, I made a rookie error and forgot to buy my signature Speed Dealer sunglasses. Now this is what a peak alpha male looks like. A day two in the city, and I really need money. So far, all I've done is buy expensive clothes and jog long distances. I walk outside and some road man offers me weed. I say no as I'm budgeting, but he's quite the salesman. Sure, bro. I mean, in the city, you gonna really need them joints, bro. You twisted my arm, all right, I'll smoke a little weed, bro. How much, uh, how much you selling for? I didn't have the cash on me, so he gave me a ride to an ATM. The first time I bought weed in Australia, I went to the address my mate gave me. I was then screamed at by a motorcycle gang member who was furious I knew his address. He became more enraged when he realized I was only buying a 20. A juxtaposed to this experience where I just bought narcotics off one of God's angels. I light one up and for a brief moment I feel like a king. Then I realize the weed is making me lazy and avoid work. No pixel is unbelievably immersive. I decide I'm going to become a garbage man to make cash and further increase my chance of attracting women. I then stumble across a BMX bike and cruise over to the sanitation plant. I meet a clown who seems like he'd chop me up and eat me if I fell asleep for too long, but I like his energy. Yeah, clown of the road. I like it. I like it. I'm a little terrified, but I like it. I do a quick stunt to establish my dominance as the alpha garbage man and then the clown, two other guys and myself set off to keep the streets clean. The big secret is, it's not garbage in these bags, it's 100% clean cut pure nose candy that we're smuggling for the mob. No I'm joking, it's just actual garbage. Just an honest blue collar day's work. Well I mean I slacked off where I could as everybody deserves a break. We grinded this out for quite some time but then something strange happened. I misclicked and punched two of my colleagues in the face which didn't help staff morale. They said nothing but I could tell it bothered them. Then something else strange happened. The psychotic clown found a mysterious package. What is I it? I don't know, he's giving me a package. What have you got there? I, that guy, I don't know, I swear this guy needs to give me this. The clown was freaking out because the package did say illegal on it. Not sure which criminal put that label on, but I realize I have to seize this opportunity. I had to turn these garbage men into a drug cartel. I hide the box in a dumpster ready to pick up after our shift. We return the truck, get paid, and then wait, but the clown doesn't return. Maybe he was scared of entering the drug game, or maybe it's because I kept accidentally landing clean haymakers onto his jaw. Down a man, we return to the dumpster and get our package. Now all we need is a chill, quiet place to unpack the narcotics. Go somewhere discreet. Yeah, yeah. Right the way. We find an alley, but then the worst possible thing happens. My god, just, just took a wrong turn, man. Yeah, we're just doing some sanitation. You we're took the very, very wrong turn. These people just and drove down the back alley, looking to they took a wrong turn. We'd just driven into a gang's block, potentially even their base of operations with a stolen box of unknown illegal substances. It started to get heated and I thought for sure these two big girls were about to cap us. Then like hood Jesus, this guy shows up. Little homies, like, you know, they, they're just trying to show their work that she's like, they, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 they do what they do, right? Yeah, yeah of course. So, just promise me, yeah, you guys yeah, promised yeah. me one thing. Just you drink some water, stay hydrated in this hot weather, man, you know? I don't know about that, but yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna smoke some joints, I'm gonna drink, drink some liquor, but that's about it. I love this man so much. The most important thing is he calmed the situation and sent us on our way. We find a place to open the box that isn't the center of a gang controlled block and inside is bags and bags of weed, also known as my ticket to a new car. We split up, but Frank and I decide to stick together. Frank explains to me that the drug trade is controlled by the gangs and if anyone's caught selling on their turf, then they die. Even still, we decide to sell the pot, but first he needs to do something far, far more important. Look after and maintain his vehicle. Are you know? Uh, we do accept tips here, but you know, they're not, uh, you're not obligated to give one, just, you know, I'm giving you a little reference point, you know? We proceed to not give him a tip. I'm still working on my side hustle of finding a sugar mama wherever I can. Do you like my sunglasses? Wait for it. Do you want my honest opinion? Yep. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I consider Miss Click punching her until she dies, but I don't want the cops to come and find our pot. Our new problem is that we don't know how to roll joints, and so we head down to the Uwu Cafe to ask around. Yes, it's uwu like the cat kitten ear girl shit. It's been a productive day and I'm at a cute little cafe, so I decide to treat myself and order a booba iced tea. Yeah, the tea is 2 50 before tax. I thought it was gonna be like 20 bucks. I don't have enough cash cash for this. I tell you what. I'm so embarrassed. Hey, I got a, I got a $500 tip like 10 minutes ago, so I'm paying it forward. Yeah, I'll make sure to pay it forward as well, hey? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. You take care. I hustled some free boba tea, bro. You got some free tea? Yeah. How'd you get some free tea? How the f
You got free tea. I lied. Said I had no money. Oh, oh damn, shit. that's unfortunate Wait. because I actually work here. I can now never show my face there again. Eventually, we do figure out how to roll spliffs, and it's exactly what you'd think. You just need papers that you buy from the service station. I roll 21 of the finest and still have bags left over. Frank and I celebrate by sparking one up at the Uwu Cafe that I'm banned from. It'll never not be funny to me seeing people learn that my name is Karthik, laughing about it, and then realizing it's an Indian name, and despite the confusion, having to just be cool about it or risk looking insensitive. What is it, Karthik? Karthik, it's Indian. Oh, Karthik. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Karthik, yeah. Okay, I, I get you, man. I get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe this is cultural appropriation, but I have no choice as there's no Anglo names with thick in them. My hands are tied. Party time is over as I now have to move this product. A short while ago, I was the new kid on the block, and now with 20 joints in my pocket, I'm the Pablo Escobar of No Pixel. I've sold a little bit of weed before to these guys in the grade above me when I was in school. I used to make a fortune as they were really Christian and had no idea how much money it was worth. I decide my best bet is to do what my younger self did and just be really confident and hope I can catch some teens walking home from Bible study. I'll sell at the same price I paid for the ones I bought. You looking to buy some weed at all? How much for 10? It turns out selling weed is really easy. People love weed, plus there's a game mechanic where your character needs to smoke or they get stressed. My strategy is to not sell to anyone who looks like they might be in a gang. I also keep the product stored up in my apartment for an extra layer of security. Your name is Clothed? Carthic, but that close. Catholic? Carthic, yeah. You're you're Catholic? Yeah, I'm Catholic. Mother Mary said, would you like to buy some weed, ladies? No. Hmm, that's interesting. You have a good day, sir. Racists. I decide to make my way over to the car salesman, but if I have to run one more block, I might genuinely uninstall this game, so I call myself a taxi. My driver rocks up in a damn commercial towing truck. This guy is adding his own flavor to taxi driving. At least I don't have to walk, but when it comes time to pay, he doesn't have a set fee. You just pay whatever you think is fair. Be brutally honest. Is that like, is that just not enough? Was that just a really low ball? Oh, that's the lowest anybody's ever paid me for a taxi. So that's cool. <laughs> I will overpay for all the taxis in the world when I'm an internationally respected drug lord. I chat with the car salesman about buying my new vehicle. I also sell her a little weed. The hustle never sleeps. It's been quite a journey, but it just goes to show through hard work, smart choices, a random garbage man clown finding a mysterious box, a gangster showing us mercy, and a $1,200 loan from Frank, you can buy yourself a dream car. At last, I'm reunited with my one true love, Shaniqua. She might have the turning circle of an unborn fetus, but she has character and personality like no other. A new car and a good friend in Frank. It could be a lot worse and I'm excited to make our next moves. If you enjoyed this video, I appreciate a like. I love you and see you soon.